Support me by giving this video a like, subscribe to my channel, check out my Patreon, or become a channel member using the join button below. Hello once again everyone, I am playing with Mui with another PWMW Reacts. So this is going to be part one of a 19 part series, where I go ahead and rewatch each of the first 19 Pokemon movies. And with that in mind, if anybody took two seconds to think about this before you clicked on this video, I'm not actually going to be showing the movie in this video. I don't want to get destroyed by copyright. So I'm just going to be recording my audio commentary while playing the video or playing the movie at the same time with a conveniently placed timer to help you guys sync it up. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, I had an idea. The idea was, a few years ago, I actually did go and watch through every single one of the first 19, actually 20, Pokemon movies. And then after which, um, after I was done with each of them, I put them on a tier list. And that tier list is a bit of a mystery to me, because I didn't write down any notes. So, I just have a bunch of movies in a list of favorite to least favorite, with no mention as to why. So, I figured, you know what, this seems like a good idea for my PWMW React series. I'll go ahead and rewatch all the Pokemon movies, and then I'll be able to actually have reasoning behind that list, and I'll be able to make some videos out of it, because, you know, I like doing that. So, um, now this version of the Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, is the one with the 10 minute bonus feature of the origin of Mewtwo. So, this movie's runtime is actually 85 minutes and 15 seconds, as opposed to the, like, 75 or whatever, like, standard version that I think, like, a bunch of places have. So, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this 10-minute bonus feature, uh, and I'll try my best to kind of sync it up with the original 75-minute version, if that's the one that you're watching with me. So, let's go ahead and do this little watch party thing. Three, two, one, now. Okay, there we go, I started playing. <laughs> I got a little nervous there, I was like, uh-oh. I just see a black screen for a few seconds. <laughs> Alright. Uh, woo, this is going to be fun. I'm unable to read this. It's in Japanese. Oh, right, this is a uh, real world. The... Uh, Mew's Pokedex entry. Uh, apparently they found Mew in the jungles of Guyana, South America. Um... <laughs> oh god, this is so well done. Hand-drawn animation. Yeah, Giovanni's kind of a bad guy. Is this the dude with the, the glasses and the giant nose? The evil scientist dude that... Spoilers. I can't remember. Like, his voice sounds just like that guy. But yeah, God, this is so old. It's Ancient Mew! Oh! What was that? The Ancient Mew card. Yeah, that has to be him that's narrating this. Oh my god, that's so gorgeous. I love it. And I love how they call Mew the most powerful Pokemon to ever exist. Hmm. Eight generations later, hmm. I mean, even in Gen 1 that wasn't the case. If Mewtwo didn't exist, maybe. But Mew was just really all, you know, like, well-rounded in terms of its stats, at least. That's a giant Ammonite. I love this. This is cool. I, I, I really like this. That they, the, like, for them to delve into the backstory of just any singular Pokemon like this is just really cool. 
It is very, very cool. What do we have? To, we're only up to two and a half minutes. Hey, there he is. Oh my god. Oh, I remember this. Oh no. This is just sad. Hmm. Wonder who these guys are. He says this knowing he's already watched it. Amber two. No. Yeah, this was just sad. Uh, the scientist that can but doesn't stop to think whether or not he should. God. <laughs> I forgot how sad this was. Whew. Five minutes in, and this thing's already got me feeling feelings. Also, it's not really explained where exactly these Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and uh, Charmander came from. <laughs> Bulbasaur. I don't understand why... I, I don't understand how they're able to do this exactly. They have, like, their own sort of, like, program or something that they can just, like, experience the world in. I don't like this. Yep, that's not good. <clears throat> that 
them showing those little alpha waves or whatever on the screen is a lot more impactful than them showing anybody not, yeah. Than just like showing the empty tubes there. Is it, though? This dude's about to be insanely lonely. And I mean really, really lonely. Oh, boy. He sure did. Oh, this music. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was the beginning of it. Okay, hang on. I'm going to I'm going to pause and I'm going to pause for anybody that that was watching along with this version uh I'm paused at 10 minutes and 39 seconds. So for anyone that wasn't watching along for the beginning bonus portion of this movie, uh there was a lot of sadness, a lot of feelings, a lot of loneliness in the origin of the Pokémon that is Mewtwo. So here we go, we're going to start off at 10 minutes and 39 seconds for uh, those at home with the 85 minute version, and the very beginning for those with the 75 minute version. Here we go, 3, 2, 1, now. Okay. It might just be the very beginning portion of this, but this seems kind of quiet. Oh, yeah, okay. Mystery. <laughs> I, You know, again, I said this during the beginning portion. This is just done so well. Which, I mean, to this day, I, I think is partly arguable, right? I mean, you know, you think of, um, um, 
was it Mega Rayquaza as being like the toppest tier of all the Pokemon. But uh, I mean, Mega Mewtwo is terrifying. Yeah, that beginning portion, honestly, it really ties the very beginning few minutes of this together. Oh boy. This is when it gets real. It seems like that's the only subject or experiment to actually survive, considering what we saw earlier. I love these little visuals here. True. <laughs> Cannot be my destiny. Definitely a iconic quote. Oh yeah, here's all the arms. Fun fact, this is where they got the idea for the game Arms. Lots of death and dying and destruction, but they're not showing the dying. Oh my god. Love that. What was this, this island? It's called New... What was it? New Moon Island, I think? There he is, just standing tall amidst a bunch of destruction. Ancient Mew. That's That was the card. I loved that, that they did that with the release of the movie. They gave away a bunch of Pokemon cards. <clears throat> I do love this sort of like this older version of Giovanni that they did, you know, like in the, the earlier uh, series of the anime where it was just, he's just sort of like this mysterious cutthroat boss of Team Rocket. I really like this version of Giovanni. Uh, 
Oh, that's right. This was they. There was a tie-in with the anime here. There was an episode where Gary gets to the Viridian Gym, and <laughs> he has to face this. And again, and, and another thing is, I love the idea of, like, this is what psychic Pokemon are capable of, you know, like, the, just like the, the more standard stuff that you would expect from, you know, a psychic, you know, they can communicate telepathically, they can levitate things. Rip. I always thought that that Thunderbolt looked incredibly powerful. Oh, here it is! Yeah, this is Gary's Nitto King and Arcanine. There he is. That's a good question for all of us, Buckaroo. Oh, this is super quiet. <clears throat> yeah, this was a really bad and dumb idea for Giovanni to do. <clears throat> I mean, th this has got to be just, like, the biggest example of ignorance or, or, like, hubris for Giovanni to think that the the Pokemon that literally destroyed an entire laboratory with a big boom would be, would be able to be, you know, uh, held and imprisoned by these little armor platelet things that he put on him. That's, that's just crazy. Absolutely nuts. Also, I'm pretty sure that shot of him flying out of there with the armor breaking away was also in the anime. I was about to say that. <laughs> That's a really nice view from that island. I don't know how much the Pokemon did to you, but... Yeah, I get that this dude is angry at the world, but that uh, that is something that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, the fact that he wants to get his revenge on Pokemon. Like, the, the Pokemon didn't do anything to him. I forgot what was... Oh. Huh. <clears throat> Rip. I can't believe a Pikachu is dead. Veronica Taylor as Ash Ketchum. All right. <clears throat> I didn't remember that line. Um, hello? This dude's literally from Team Aqua? But with a red bandana? Hmm. 
a Pokemon battle doesn't work. I guess not for you. Also, I absolutely love this remix of the first Pokemon theme. I always thought this was so good. Oh, he, um, he pulls out Donphin, if I recall correctly. Yeah, there it is. Just imagine that in the movie theaters, everybody looking at this thing and going, What is that? I did love this for the fact that, you know, it was... <laughs> I mean, Pokemon in, in itself is an advertising vehicle, but this thing was an advertising for Gen 2. An advertising vehicle for Gen 2. But I loved it! I loved seeing the Pokemon that, you know, we'd never seen before, that we were going to see in Gold and Silver. <clears throat> you know, we saw Togepi up to this point. Obviously, Togepi becomes oh, not, pretty much like a secondary starring character. Um, and then uh, in the Pikachu's vacation portion, we see Snubble and Meryl. You did it! He's <clears throat> being spied on. Machamp. This dude literally has a Donphin and a Machamp, and he's just getting destroyed by a Bulbasaur and a Squirtle. That is laughable. Oh? Bubble, was it Bubble Beam? Yeah. Very fancy effects there. It just oh yeah, that's right. It just faints from one bubble beam. It's just I mean this this guy's Pokemon have to be the weakest final Evos ever, or Ash's Pokemon's plot armor is just that strong. What do we got? Pinsir, Venomoth, and Golem. Yeah, and then Pikachu can just 1v3 them in one shot. Yeah, uh, it, it's the blood armor. That was just for Donk and Donk. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that voice line. The way that that dude says, oh, no, so iconic. Oh, no. Oh? That's a little weird. <laughs> I'm so hungry I would eat Pokemon food. Wow, Jessie didn't even get angry at that. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, that's true. Ash... The three of them must be winning some serious battles for them to constantly have enough money to always have food for them and all their Pokemon. Ah, uh, yes, the the original drone, Firo. Yeah, it's so hard to see, but Mewtwo does wave his arm there. It's so small and like so far away. It, it's like you can't even see it, or you wouldn't notice it. Essentially, it's Dragonite. This Dragonite is gonna spam the three uh, main characters. <laughs> uh -huh. He's so friendly. Futuristic. Oh. Right, I don't miss that. About Brock. Oh, it was just New Island. I thought it was New Moon Island. Pfft. <laughs> 
Yes, no. There's no name on it or anything, it's just a yes or a no. It's, it's time to stop. Pikachu's just eating the note. I love Dragonite's whole um, aesthetic here of just being like this incredibly powerful dragon type Pokemon that's also like a gentle giant is great. Exactly. See, James knows. It's like, why does it just say yes or no? Also, this is incredibly overpowered. You, Mewtwo can just stir up a, a, a severe storm here. I was going to say a monsoon, but that, that's, I don't think that that's as intense as that gets. It's just basically making a big sea storm. Oh. Oh, that first line. Just the just that mew. I that just I'm pretty sure that just had the audience going, dude. Like Mew was Mew was a humongous deal back then. Like you gotta realize that and the and the pre age of, you know, just like doing everything online. Getting Mew was such a huge deal that, like, you know, you literally would have to have gone to, which I did, that mall tour that they did all around the country where they stopped at certain malls for just a certain amount of time, one time. That's it, just once. And that's how you would be able to get Mew. It was a, it was a big deal. It was a very big deal. Honestly, I would say the same thing with Celebi. It's just like Mew was just like the original, you know, like mythical Pokemon that, you know, was impossible to get through normal means. Yeah, Officer Jenny. Do your job, lady. <laughs> How about Pikachu waits until everybody starts drying off to do that? <laughs> right. That seems like a bad idea. Hmm. <laughs> Who's that? A missing person named Joy. <laughs> that's so fun. Yeah, I wonder why she looks familiar. <gasps> but that's just too funny. Like, I, I love how they keep mentioning this thing about the Pokemon tears over and over again. Also, ooh, animation error. Gyarados's mouth was blue there. I... that seems like an overreach? Honestly, I like... 
I really liked the the girl trainer. I wish they would have done something more with her. Guess you're right. Oh, this part. Oh, God, I hate it. Please stop. <laughs> Meow. Oh, I forgot about that part. Oh, God. It, it hurts. Please make it stop. <laughs> Obviously... When this movie first came out, the, the Minnesota Vikings pun was probably very funny. But now it's just like, please make it stop. Also, that was just another uh, example of the references to the real world that the this series sometimes does. <laughs> Good thing conveniently Misty also has po water Pokemon. <clears throat> I don't think, yeah, Brock doesn't have any though. Yeah. He has, what, all of his is Brock Pokemon and then Vulpix. Wee! It's actually incredible that they managed to do that. Although I guess water Pokemon are pretty much OP under the water. We. <laughs> Although another thing that I feel is worth mentioning is... I feel like I didn't really realize it for a long time that Veronica Taylor did double duty in Advanced Generation as both Ash and May. I didn't realize that she voiced May. And that just blew my mind. Which I think I only really recognized it when, um, Dragon Ball Super English dub happened. And then, uh, 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 uh Ribrian's voice. I was just like, wait a minute, that's May. <laughs> what did happen? I was like, oh, Veronica Taylor. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, she was also Ash. Yeah, that's just OP that you can just float over the clouds. <clears throat> Spooky. Why does that light have to be green? God, the colors, though, are something else. They did a super great job with that. No. What are you going to do if I don't? Of how that was conveniently not destroyed or lost. Gasp!
<laughs> Wheezing. Yeah, we know that's your name. Oh yes, this is when we get to see that Mew is such a, a playful little creature, and just how stark of a difference there is in the personalities between Mew and Mewtwo. You'd think he could make he could have made the decor a little less spooky. <laughs> like, does it have to look like we're walking into the Death Star right now? And conveniently enough, it's the three trainers that we saw earlier. Weird, 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 weird. Nope, they're all dead. <laughs> Ignored. Oh, yeah, that looks safe. <laughs> hmm. I think, I'll, I think they do that on three different occasions where all three of them kind of sense Mew nearby. <laughs> God. Oh! <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot Psyduck exists. That's not Pidgeotto. That's a Pidgeot. What are we going to get wrong next, buddy? Wait, he said they were all water type. There was a Nitto Queen in there. I love that goblet. That's just like that medieval-looking goblets that are on the on the broken-up table there. She actually has a a semi-diverse uh, team in terms of types. Although I think the first dude has like the most diversity. The one with the Pidgeotto. <laughs> <coughs> Again, does this have to be spooky and dramatic? <laughs> it's just like Mewtwo's just like, I have to be brooding spooky and dramatic. Uh, hey, it's Meowth's turn. Ha! <laughs> She's gone. Love how Meowth doesn't care about wet water during this portion. <clears throat> Was it that was in this movie, right? Didn't he say that? Wasn't that part of or one of his lines? I hate water, especially wet water.
Casper. <laughs> Again, uh, Death Star. Like the, I'm just getting some serious Darth Vader f vibes off of Mewtwo here. For Splash. <clears throat> Oh, I love that little sound effect there. That little rip. Caratos is dead. And of course, who runs up to grab her? Uh, of course. Um. Well, it's great now that uh, Nurse Joy is back, so she can heal Gyarados. I oh, love how they did this. Again, this is just all hand-drawn stuff. True. Love well, that they had to break in, break up that tense moment with, "Hey, here's what Team Rocket's doing." Which again, they didn't even need these parts. Not until, yeah, essentially until they get to here, which is where we kind of get some a little bit more backstory. <laughs> Jesse's face. Nice way to use your butt, Jesse. All right. When Jesse's butt advances the plot and gives us a bunch of exposition as well. Oh, yeah, spooky. <laughs> just go into the spooky cave, just spooky chamber, just to get some of your fur removed. Love the funny reference there. But yeah, I mean, even even still, talking about the hand-drawn stuff, there is some obvious computer animation here. Such as with that Meowth model. That's awfully super convenient. Oh, there's the exposition. Found it. Rip. That's the part where he got blowed up and died. Pokenstein. Cat. <laughs> I remember that. Hmm, maybe it was Mewtwo.
maybe. Oh. Spooky eyes. I mean, he's got the right idea, to be honest. It's just, there's nothing that he has that can't do that. A very good idea, though. I remember this part, I could never tell. It looks like, it looks like Rhyhorn's horn is touching Mewtwo. But again, I can't really tell. She has no neck! Look at that, she has no neck! She had no neck, that was spooky. When she turned around and looked at Mewtwo, their neck just stopped existing. That was weird. That's really creepy. Also, yeah, that's really weird looking, too. Oh, God, weird. <laughs> Somebody mentioned recently that these should be skins for uh, the three Kanto starters in, uh, in Pokemon Unite, which I would be down for. I think these would make great skins. Be a good reference. <clears throat> oh, now they see it. <laughs> Alright. It's time for you to stop. Okay. And how convenient that three of the four trainers that are there... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I should say six. <laughs> three of the six trainers that are there happen to have a Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur between them. Wow. Root, root. Oh, yeah, that's right, they have nicknames. Shell Shocker. <laughs> yeah, you Charizard that doesn't really care about you very much. Huh. <laughs> True. Just spits fire. <clears throat> That's how you know that Charizard's a badass, because he spits on the ground. Me? I don't love how big, lumbering, slow-moving Venusaur is, but I think when the battle actually starts, it gets a lot faster. Oh, at least the vines are. Rip. Well, like, rip root. Hmm. 
Rapid spin? That wasn't a thing until Gen 2, wasn't it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> you think Charizard's listening to you? Charizard's just pissed. I love that little shot there with Mewtwo, just kind of looking up, smirking. This little plan is coming all together. That was, um, what's it called? Um, Seismic Toss. <clears throat> I think. Rip. I kind of love how everything in this movie is just going down in one hit. Gotta make things short and simple. Oh, hey, it's the original, um, uh, Beast Balls. <laughs> How convenient. Now imagine if those things could capture people. That would make this movie a lot darker. Also, I love how in looking up, making sure that I got the name Beast Ball right, I just now found out that its Japanese names are actually Ultra Ball. Which would make sense, because they catch the Ultra Beasts. Um, and in learning that, I went and looked and was like, what's Ultra Ball's Japanese name? Oh, it's called Hyper Ball. And then the Great Ball would be Super Ball. Honestly, I wish they would have just kept those names. Those just That just sounds better, honestly, I think, than, than Great and Ultra. <laughs> I love this part. <laughs> it just captures the Pokeballs. <laughs> it just captures the Pokeballs. Now, oh, please, you should be happy about that. Also, just ooh, really quickly going back to the, the ball names. It would also have a little bit of uniformity with the super potions and the hyper potions. Wee! I remember this! They showed this part on, um... If anybody's a boomer like me, there was an old talk show called Regis and Kathy Lee. Uh, and they were talking about this movie. And the part of the movie that they showed to kind of hype it up was this, right here. I don't remember what they were saying about the movie, but this is what they showed. God, Pikachu's stamina is just so bad, he can't even, like, can't even handle three or four Thunderbolts without getting exhausted. Dramatic tension. Whee! Oh. Convenient that that water just happened to be there. So, you know, he didn't die.
There are a lot of insanely crazy things that Ash has done that honestly should have killed him. And not in, like, a comical way. I mean, really killed him. And they didn't. Oh, they get a name, they get one of the names wrong here. That was, uh... There it was, yeah. Yeah, he calls it Sand True instead of... <laughs> instead of Sand Slash. What do you mean today? You just saw them like an hour ago. I love how he, yeah, he literally uses bite here. And then just destroys the machine. <laughs> Ash's bite is just that powerful. God. Yeah, just throw them all in at once. Here we go. <laughs> it looks more like they're just getting vomited out, to be honest. Okay, I wanna I wanna see how that Gyarados came out of there. Alright, it's please, enough with the puns. I love how the clone Meowth walks on four legs. Again, stop with the puns. Oh, there's the originals. Yeah, how convenient. <laughs> you know what would have been honestly really creepy is if a bunch of Pokemon that weren't already in this movie came out of those balls. And then and then it would have just been like, where did those th those come from? All that wasted food. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Mute I love how Mewtwo's just standing there. I assume I guess he's just waiting there because he knows that the cloning process thingy is happening. What a nice guy. Boom. Oh, is this the song? Oh, no, not yet. <clears throat> that, you know, I feel like that portion of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the dialogue didn't really make a lot of sense because they were clearly turned around. They knew something was coming, but Mewtwo was just talking like, oh, hey, I just won. Vaporeon's eyes? Help? Again, Ash just does a lot of really stupid things that should have gotten him killed. <clears throat> that yeah, this this is a prime example. So, ow, <laughs> my tailbone. If 
Finally, the showdown that every single little kid in the audience was waiting for. Her. Who call me? It's just, I don't understand. I really don't get this part. What, what does he need to kill Mew for? What, is, what does that prove? Like, he, I'm better. But, I mean, why? <laughs> just blast him back. And, and again, it's what I said originally, the Pokemon didn't do anything to him. It was the humans. <laughs> if anything, he's doing everything to the Pokemon. He's become what he hates so much. Oh, here's the song, right? Yep, this is it. Hang in there, baby. <clears throat> <clears throat> water. My water. Oh, God. Hello? Why are we going down? <laughs> Turns out that was an elevator. Bop. <clears throat> I love how now they're kind of like on equal footing as as they're fighting, whereas initially the clones were very clearly much stronger than the originals. Gotta build up that dramatic tension, you know? <laughs> His body slams him. Smack. <laughs> and of course, they have to give, of all of the clones, they have to give the Pikachu clone some slight differences, whereas the other clones look exactly the same. <clears throat> Whee! Nom. Yeah. <laughs> 
Woo! Woo! Sleepy horses. Good thing that happens never. Got the pods. Glad that, they're, that Mew and Mewtwo are just fighting to this pointless standstill. Oh, wait, that's what everybody's doing. <laughs> God, I just got whammed in the face. <clears throat> Whoa. Again, <laughs> Ash, just, uh, just in these really, really ridiculous situations where he should at least be injured. Wasn't this a meme? I swear that, that, that this slapping gif was made into a meme. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's grim. <clears throat> and Meowth? Are we not going to talk about how both of the Meowths aren't fighting? <clears throat> Stadium lights get all blackened out, gets all dramatic. They're charging their key. Mew and Mewtwo. Oh, 
Oh, oh, here comes the sad part. <laughs> you know, I could say it again, but it just it, this speaks for itself. I love how instead of dying, he just gets petrified. Remember how they mentioned the thing about the Pokemon Tears about 50 times? That's a really great shot. I will admit, though, you know, even having seen this like ten times and knowing exactly what's coming, it's still it's still a pretty good uh, emotionally rich moment. I feel, especially if you know you're a fan up you know up to this point. Super magical Pokemon tears. Wow. Oh. Also, oh, there was something that I remembered um, when Pikachu was zapping the petrified Ash. <clears throat> Misty says, please no, but in the Japanese version, she says Pikachu. They, they did a lot of work putting in uh, the ship, the shipping between uh, Ash and Misty. <clears throat> well, Mewtwo, I'm glad that it took a child dying for you to realize that. <clears throat> As if you, like, going through with that original plan that you had of, like, killing all, like, humans in the world was not going to do that. <laughs> but Ash dying and everybody crying over it, that that's what did it. Also, that's another good point! It why I love how all the Pokemon were the ones that were sad over it, but none of the humans cared enough to cry. Everybody was just all the humans were just kind of staring like, hmm. Convenient memory wipe. 
also, yeah, it's pr it's pretty amazing how quickly Mewtwo changed his tune there after spending the first hour of the movie being pissed. Also, I love how this is this was more than just a memory wipe. This is literally a time reversal. Stop. We love character development that does that turns out to absolutely not matter. Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Here's the credits. Oh goodness me. Um, so yeah, so while the uh, while the credits are going here, and we get to listen to some of the music that was on the uh, uh, soundtrack for this film, which by the way I also had, and I love pretty much all of the songs on it. Um, so let's see. There were a few things that I wanted to uh, brain dump here. Uh, <clears throat> so, there was, um... Oh, right. Oh, I don't think that it's actually shown here. Uh, never mind. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was going to mention something about the moon. Uh, when Amber 2 was showing the moon to, to like, young you 2 at the beginning. Uh, there's a... God. There's a uh, a page on um Here we go. Pokemon World in relation to the real world. There's like a picture of uh Mewtwo standing in front of what looks like New York City. Oh yeah, there it is. It's for Mewtwo Returns. Okay, that wasn't actually like like an actual movie. Uh you know, like listed as like one of the Pokemon movies, but like yeah, this is like a sequel to Mewtwo Strikes Back. Uh, yeah, and it's like it shows him standing in, in front of uh, a moon, which I thought maybe that was kind of the reference there, but I don't know. Uh, so I, when I was looking at young Mewtwo and Amber 2, I definitely got some serious Shadow and Maria vibes, and uh, it definitely makes me feel that, like, uh, Sega got that idea maybe from this. Was or wait a minute, no, that that can't be the case. Yeah, it came out in ninety eight. When did SA two come out? That was well, wait, it was two oh two thousand and one. Okay, maybe, maybe could have been influenced by that. It it just it really gave me just vibes of Shadow of Maria. I was just like, hmm, 
You know, like, here's, here's, like, this young girl that, like, you know, the sort of anti-hero character loves and then dies. And then the anti-hero character becomes, you know, sort of like this murderous villain type. Um, th there was, uh, some criticism, at least on the Wikipedia page, showed that, that much of the criticism was pointed, uh, in the movie, pointed at the poor voice acting... And its inclusion of an anti-violence message, despite it being a Pokemon film. And that was for the English version. Um, now, it also says further retrospective criticism of the English version was targeted against the removal of most of the, most of the ethical topics, such as part of Mewtwo's origin story. Which, that one I'll agree with. I don't think that the, the voice acting was that bad. Was it a little bad in certain points? For sure. But... I don't think that it was, like, so terrible that, like, you know, it could be considered poor. I, I don't see that as poor voice acting. I thought that that was actually pretty good. I thought Mewtwo's voice actor was pretty good. Um, and, you know, again, it was just, like, a standard uh, performance from the main cast. Uh, and what was the other thing? Oh, the anti-violence message, despite it being a Pokemon film... But, I mean, I don't really understand why that's a criticism. It makes sense. Also, yeah, there's, like, this after credit scene. Which is, again, this is brilliant. This is, like, it's so great how they just did this. Just every every little bit of detailing that they did with the backgrounds and the animation and whatnot was very well done, I felt. Uh, and very good. I, I definitely enjoyed that movie and, st and still do to this day. <laughs> The anti-violence message makes a lot of sense because, again, they explain it. it. It literally is like Mewtwo was like forcing these clones to fight. Pokemon do fight. They're, that's like their natural instinct is to fight. That's the whole point of the series. But he's forcing them to fight when it's just pointless to do so and they're literally just going to like kill each other. And that doesn't make any sense. So that that's a bad thing. And that was portrayed as a bad thing, and it should have been portrayed as a bad thing. So I don't really understand why that's like a, a bit of criticism. I I don't I don't I'm not seeing it. Um. And also, what was the other thing that I was going to say? Oh, so okay. <clears throat> Finally, the last reason as to why, or the last thing I'm going to mention is <laughs> the reason why. I ended up doing this, again, is because of the tier list that I made. Now, going forward, for the movies after this, I'm going to mention where I placed them on my original tier list. And then, at the very end, I'm going to see where my tier list stands from back then. I think this was like 2017, maybe 2018, and then now. Um, this movie, out of the first 20, I placed at number 4. Um... And definitely, as I got through, like, the halfway part of the, the halfway mark of the film, when they were, um, when they just got out of the storm and they got into the calm waters just outside the island, I definitely got hit with, like, a blast of nostalgia. And that's definitely, I feel, why I definitely put this this one at number four. It's, it's most certainly a good portion as to why I reverence this film as much as I do. So, Mew and Mewtwo, movie number one, there's number four on this mysterious tier list. And going forward again, I'm going to mention where I put each of the other ones at the very beginning, and then uh, I already have an idea for a video in the works where I'm just going to go over all of them and, uh, and talk about this tier list and, and why I put them there. And this definitely helps. This definitely, definitely helps. Um, so yeah. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And, uh, I could only assume watching along with me. Otherwise, you were just listening to my commentary of stuff that you didn't really see the context of. Which is a little odd. I'm going to be honest here. So that's it. That's going to be it for me, Mr. The Plague with Boy. 
If you like this video, why don't you subscribe or check out some other videos? There's more on the way, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video. Go ahead and subscribe and click that alert bell so that you know whenever I actually do upload a video once in a, a forever. And uh, if you're feeling generous, you can follow me or become a Patreon or join me as a channel member using the join button below. That's going to be it for this video. I'm moving on to the next one. See you all next time. A huge thank you to my monthly supporters who helped make this video possible. Joel, Colin, Crasher, Jasmine, Tiberia, Boo Games, Top Sauce, and Tyler.